I'm absolutely certain that this is Africa's time uh, because consistently across the discussions uh, during the ADB annual meetings, people are talking about how to take advantage of what everybody sees as Africa uh, leading the way in terms of growing the world economy. Right. And it's not just about the natural resource story, um, it's about rising incomes, uh, a growing middle class. Yeah. Uh, it's also about the huge opportunities um, in infrastructure to improve the business environment. Um, also, uh, the huge opportunities, the experience with telecommunications and what it's done uh, in the last 11 years yeah. and the opportunities that still exist uh, in that sector. Uh, it's about what we can do if we go back to basics, if we invest in agriculture. Yeah. Uh, my own country, uh, Nigeria, uh, is, uh, has developed a blueprint on how it's going to transform agriculture because for us, uh, agriculture uh, uh, employs 70% of Nigerians. Right. It makes up more than 40% of our GDP. And that story is the same for many African countries. The African Development Bank uh, uh, has knowledge and experience lending into infrastructure, lending into agriculture, lending to industry, yeah. supporting financial services. Right. So, so this, the story of, of, of the African continent is that this is our time right. and we must seize the moment. And, and that's what I keep hearing yeah. across the seminars. And the high level seminars that we've been attending here, one of them I attended yeah. myself, it was on Africa, transforming Africa. So how do we make sure that Africans are the drivers of the change that we are seeing and the transformation that we're seeing? Another one was on uh, taking opportunity, uh, advantage of the whole issue and discussion around the green economy and all those things. Are these the appropriate things to be focusing on at this time when perhaps other people are saying what we ought, ought to be doing is to make sure that maybe just inclusive growth is the key and that's what we should be focusing on? Um, I think that, that we should focus on all the above. First, you need growth. Yeah. You need that growth to be inclusive. Right. You need it to be sustainable. So focusing on a green economy is extremely important. Focusing on execution issues yeah. is very, very important. True. And Africans understand their issues the best. This is why the African Development Bank annual meetings yeah. is an absolutely outstanding forum because the African Development Bank has a wealth of experience in terms of the knowledge that it has yeah. over several years, yeah. since 1964, as you mentioned. The annual meetings is also a forum that brings people together who understand issues that relate to Africa, who have done and focused on issues that relate to Africa. Yeah. My view is that some of the bigger issues relate to execution. Um, it's not, you know, the issue is not how you skin the cow. Yeah. The, the issue is just okay. skinning the cat, Absolutely. whichever model we take. And what I like is that we're not focusing on theory any, anymore. We're focusing on more pragmatic issues. Right. If it is agriculture, what do we need to do? What do we need to do to ensure that we go up a value chain yeah. and that we link, you know, one of the seminars, you had uh, policymakers, but you also had people who were running exchanges all in one room. So from policy yeah. to execution, yeah. um, whether it is infrastructure, we understand it's a big issue. We understand that the governments themselves can't do it alone and therefore you need to bring private sector. Yeah. So having private sector players at the table, having government at the table such that the operating environment is supportive yeah. of, of those who can bring the funding for infrastructure is key. Yeah. And, and, and so for me, that is important. Yeah, there's of course a, a robust exchange of ideas that's ongoing here. And one of the uh, ideas that came up in one of the seminars was whether actually Africa needs to create another institution or either housed inside the ADB or outside or elsewhere, that enforces and makes sure that all the contracts that have been, uh, you know, put together and all these uh, other plans that have been uh, put together are actually enforced and come to fruition. Um, What's well, your view on that? First, um, I think there is a growing recognition. Yeah. As I mentioned earlier, the one key issue is execution. Absolutely. There are very many brilliant ideas. And usually, when people are focusing on doing, uh, what usually happens is after they've been successful, people start to analyze how they did it. Right. Africa is 54 countries. Yeah. Uh, each one will have its own story to tell. Right. There are lots of positive examples within the continent to learn from. There are examples from outside the continent. Yeah. But what is important is that we get, get on with it and get it done. And so we, we need, need a both. policeman. We need both. We need to strengthen all of the institutions that we have, both in terms of making sure that they have the finances, but in terms of making sure that 
they, they attract the right kind of human capital right. to ensure that they do their work well. I think, you know, I've seen the African Development Bank evolve. Uh, I've seen it grow from strength to strength. Uh, even since I left as vice president in 2009, I can see that it's doing better. It's leveraging its convening power. It's, it's very, there's clarity as to what the ADB is focused on, right. that it wants to support infrastructure, that it wants to support agriculture, that it wants to be the one that brings together public sector and private sector. That clarity uh, is there. Similarly, the regional economic groupings. Yeah. Um, I think that SADC is a great example, the East African uh, community is a great example, and ECOWAS is doing is doing is doing as well. Uh, and you know the Maghreb region has their own grouping. So if we continue to strengthen some of our regional institutions, they can't help with execution. So are you saying but we don't yes, need a policeman? No, no, no. I we think need we need a policeman. a policeman because it has been a gap. Okay. Uh, but it could be an existing institution. Sure. Uh, and my preference okay. is to think about an existing institution okay. that already has experience. Another another institution. One. Yes. Cool. one of the sessions that you are attending today yourself is, of course, uh, on uh, involving the private sector more and getting the private sector to work with governments. Perhaps just give us your thoughts in, before you go into that session. So are you referring about uh, the, the one about nurturing yeah. uh, young companies to grow? Yes. Well, uh, my view uh, has always been that um, creating jobs is if you had to ask what is one thing that a country and economy should do yeah. it is to create jobs for its people but most importantly when you have a, 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 a continent that is so youthful uh, creating jobs has to be the agenda and what creates jobs it's the private sector it's small and medium scale enterprises. It's creating the right environment for those small and medium scale enterprises to yeah. create jobs. Yeah. And it's creating the environment from a policy point of view such that these companies can be nurtured, such that they can ultimately yeah. become larger companies, be listed on exchanges, yeah. and also uh, be able to have multiplier effects and groom other yeah. companies. So I'm really looking forward to participating uh, in the CEO dialogue on how we're uh, going to groom and nurture and nurture companies. I do think that even as we think holistically yeah. uh, of how we support our youth uh, and, and empower them, even as we think about our educational system, breeding entrepreneurs is very, very critical. So as we look at our curricula, for secondary schools, for universities, ensuring that when people come out, come out of those institutions, yeah. that they're ready to start their own businesses, they're ready to be employers of labor, they're ready to support large companies, yeah. they're ready to grow as companies, absolutely critical. So I'm delighted uh, to be part of that dialogue to talk about how we can support small and medium scale enterprises better.